have back problems. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Today I am finally getting a much needed thing off my to-do list. I am going to build myself a spray booth for my airbrush. Winter is coming, so I, I just, I gotta get it done. I spent a bit of time in preparation, ordering some parts. I got a whole bunch of stuff from Amazon, a fan, some ducting stuff. Today I went out to Home Depot, got supplies to build the encasement. And hopefully I can knock this whole thing out in my allotted build time. I think it's possible. I feel like this is a weekend project type thing. I do wanna say right off the bat that my decisions in building this aren't necessarily what I think are the most cost effective or easiest. They're just the things that I've chosen because it's the way I wanna do it. I ordered my fan and some ducting off Amazon and I will put a list of that equipment in the video description below. If you wanna check it out, use it as reference. Of course, you might find better options locally. I went for the convenience, but I also bought a ton of stuff at Home Depot. I'm making this out of MDF. It's going to be a piece of furniture that I can move around. I am going to install it permanently into my house. I'm gonna cut a hole in my wall, duct it out properly. This is not gonna be a little rinky dinky collapsible thing that plugs out the window. So while I still have some daylight, I gotta get started. And the first thing I need to do is actually plan out my cuts on the frame. My initial plan for this booth was to make a spray booth for the airbrush with a fan that sucked out air and utilize the same fan with a T on the ducting to also suck out air from an encasement for my 3D printers. 3D printers that I don't actually own yet, but know eventually I'll probably get one. My idea was that this whole side would be one piece and it would be a combined unit, but I've actually shifted away from this. I don't think I'm gonna build it with this encasement on it because with resin printing, if I have a print going and I wanna use this airbrush booth, I'm concerned that the motion, the movement from the bottom to the top could screw up the prints. I don't know, I could be wrong about that. I thought it might be a bad idea to keep this attached. So instead I'm going to focus right now just on building the bottom section. In the future, I can build a second box that I either bolt to this one or bolt to the wall separately or put somewhere else, but still utilizes the same fan. The idea here is that I have an inline fan on the wall going through one duct that has a TY and blast gates to be able to divert the fan from the spray booth or to the resin printer or open up both. But I need to figure out this shape. I'm just gonna make use of some of the size of the material as it already is, which is 48 inches long and 24 inches wide. There's gonna be a shelf at 28 inches, which will be my work surface. What I really have to figure out is this angle here. I'm not quite sure how big I want these things to be. It's gonna be dictated by the filter that I got, and I think I'm just going to lay it out and figure it out on the material itself. I actually was surprised to find that you can get 10 by 20 filters. I thought for sure it would be at least 24 inches long, and this is good because I don't want my spray booth to be super wide. It has to fit in a specific spot and I'm limited in its size. I know that I want this filter to sit at an angle. It kind of goes against some of the spray booth designs I've seen, the ones that are on the market. Usually they take up the whole back and perhaps that is better for airflow, but I want my exhaust port to come off the rear of this. It's gonna have to turn into the ducting. And if I put this all right at the back, then this whole unit's gonna have to sit pretty far away from the wall and encroach on my workspace in a way that I don't want. So I kinda wanna cut in at an angle. That means I want this like this. But again, I also wanna make sure I leave enough of a top surface here in the event I want to add that 3D printer area. I feel like the top, I would like to have 
let's say 13 inches, which shouldn't be an issue for this. Now the natural thing to do would be to make this a 45 degree angle, but again, because of this, I actually wanna to try to raise this up as vertically as possible. So I'm gonna make this a wider angle, and this is gonna involve absolutely no measurements because measurements are really irrelevant here, except for this one. That looks about how I want this to sit. So I'm just gonna eyeball it, commit to it with a Sharpie marker, and that's my cut. Now I want my work surface to be 28 inches from the bottom. So I'll just measure that out. Put an X down, X down. That's not a cut, but it lets me see what my finished work area is gonna be like. And I think that this is enough room. I mean, I'm not airbrushing huge things. It's small models. I think that is enough space. So I need to go outside and cut two of these pieces exactly like this, just that one cut off the corner there. But I also need to cut pieces for the tops here, the back and this shelf. That's about as in-depth as my planning gets when I build this sort of thing. So let's go outside and cut some material. Two pieces, same time. Okay, that's all my cuts. Now you can go inside, put it together. Hi, this is where I've gotten after a few hours of building and I gotta say, I'm pretty okay with this. Turned out pretty decent. I am already a little bit regretting that I didn't take more time to pull out the table saw and make some of these pieces that I made out of quarter inch MDF out of half inch and do some nice mitered cuts to really make this thing look good. But then I also remembered that this is just a wood box that I'm gonna spray paint into, so I really shouldn't waste my time worrying about it. Which leads me to my next change. My original concept was to have the air filter here and then use some of this pegboard or hole board, whatever you call it, to put in front to act as a baffle to try and catch some of the overspray paint before it hits the filter 
to make the filter last a little bit longer. I feel like it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt to make that fit in there and stand away from it and make everything removable, especially because I have plans on adding lights here. And you know what? I think I'm just gonna skip it. I think I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna put the filter there and yeah, maybe the air filters need to get changed more often. I'm gonna keep that piece so that if I find they clog up way too fast, I still have it and I can still do it. That piece cost me $4.50, so I don't feel too bad if I don't use it. Now I gotta paint this thing. I'm gonna paint the outside all black to blend in with my room, but I'm gonna paint the inside white so that it's bright and I can actually see what I'm doing while painting. While the paint is drying on this thing, I'm gonna start working on the venting. And the biggest part of that task is getting the exhaust vent through the wall. So I first have to drill a hole through my exterior wall. That's always super fun. The biggest challenge is that there's stucco on the outside, so I'll need to use a grinder to cut that out. And the other challenge is hitting a spot where I want it both inside and outside without hitting a stud. So wish me luck. Getting pretty close to this thing actually being up and running and I am really glad to have that vent cut out now. Uh, the stucco cutting sucks to do and I just looked at the weather and we have snow coming up in the forecast for like the next five or six days straight. Man, even for Winnipeg, this is super weird for early October. The trees haven't even lost their leaves yet and they're totally sagging under all this wet icy snow. There's like 20 trees down in the neighborhood and 40,000 people lost power today. So I had excellent time in getting this done. Essentially, I just got to connect point A to point B. I'm going to use this four inch hose. I went out of my way to order a black one because, you know, I was going to use a TY and some blast gates so that I could divert the draw of the air from the spray booth to like I said, a 3D printer enclosure. I don't have my 3D printer yet. When I get one, I don't know where it's going. I'm, I'm still not really sure 
what I'm gonna do with it. So I think I'm gonna leave this out for now and just directly hook it up and I can always add this in later. Part of the reason I'm not bothering to connect it right now is that I ordered all these parts from this company called PowerTech. It's specifically extraction air parts, like it's meant for dust stuff in shops got these blast gates but the really silly thing is that they didn't sell couplers to attach part to part you can only attach hose to the pieces and these blast gates they require a lot of force to open and close so i don't want them just in the middle of a floppy cord i want them connected really securely. So I gotta try to source out a coupler or inside connection that will work for these. They're an odd size. They look like ABS plumbing, but they're not. I'm gonna have to go to a store with one of these and try to get something to fit. But for now, that's not a problem because I'm just gonna skip it and just use the fan and the hose. Now this fan I got here is a pretty hefty fan. It is 205 CFM, which is fairly strong. Your typical bath fan is going to be less than half of that usually. A big bath fan is like 95 CFM, maybe 110 for a larger one. This is also an inline fan. And the reason I chose an inline fan rather than a bath fan or a hood range fan that would connect just to this is again so that I could use that one fan for multiple sources of extraction because I can divert it. Now, one thing I gotta say about this fan and almost every extraction fan you will find, these are not rated as spark proof. So what that means is if you're using an aerosol spray paint, there is technically a small chance that the vapors could ignite from a spark. It's an incredibly small chance, but it is a chance nonetheless. So this, I'm just saying, is really just meant for airbrushing and stuff. Now, I may or may not use it for spray paint in the future, but I'm telling you, technically, I'm not supposed to. So now I'm gonna mount this somewhere on the wall and connect the hoses and see if it works. And then I can add lighting and get this thing set up to use. And that's a wrap. This thing is done. I have been procrastinating on building one of these for at least a year now. So I'm very happy that it's finally complete. Now I can airbrush without worrying about the dust going everywhere. I can spray stuff in the winter, which is basically starting now. I'm really happy I finally built this thing.
Couple things to keep in mind. These LED tape lights I used, they're super cheap. They're not the highest quality. They may end up having dead LEDs at some point in time, but they're so cheap I can just replace them. Also, in order to turn them and make bends, you can do that by soldering on little jumper connectors or using the corner clip-ons that are just like a snip and click that make things really easy. I used that on my lighting at my desk and I found them to be kind of crappy and they just sort of fall apart. So here, I just folded them to make 90 degree corners and it worked perfectly fine. Some of the items for this build I got online and some of them I got at Home Depot, but I will put a list of all of the things used in this build in the video description below. Some of them are just gonna be listed because you're gonna have to go to store to buy them. Some of them I will link to the products that I bought on Amazon. Of course, shop around, find what works best for you. In terms of pricing, because I know some of you are wondering what it costs to build this thing, that's sort of hard to gauge because I bought a bunch of different things, didn't use it all. I was buying stuff where I buy it, in my city, in my country, with my taxes and my availability and currency exchange. And basically it came out to being about double the price of one of those off the shelf little cheap ready to go ones that you can buy. But the fan I used is a lot more powerful. It's venting right outside and this is a piece of furniture. It's solid and it's hefty. So I think the price was worth it to me. I also spent more on the fan than you might want to. Again, I wanna stress that this fan is not an explosion proof fan. There is always a slight risk that using aerosol spray paint through it, if the bushings in the fan spark and there's enough flammable vapor in the line, it could theoretically ignite. That's gonna be the same for a bath fan, a hood range fan, basically any fan that isn't rated as an explosion proof fan and finding one of those is very difficult and very expensive. I'm doing my due diligence and saying, hey, it's not for this, it's for airbrushing. Use your own judgment, do some of your own research to see if you feel comfortable spraying with aerosols through a regular exhaust fan. If you like this video, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section below. I hope you found it helpful. Of course, if you wanna pick up any other tools or supplies for your hobbying needs, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. That's where I list all of the stuff that I use regularly and link to it so you can get the right thing. You don't need to ask me what I use for this, that, the other thing, it's probably listed there. And if you really enjoy my videos and my output and you wanna help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon. It's through the funds there that I'm able to dedicate my full-time efforts to this hobby and to this channel that I hope serves the community well. That's it for this week, guys. I'm just gonna spray all of the things now. I'm just gonna paint and 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 paint. See you again next week. Cheers.